All right, it's time to take a look at the outside greenhouse. Now this is different from the lean-to greenhouses that I built, and I'll show that in a later video. This is a pretty inexpensive, I think $150 greenhouse from, uh, what was it, uh, Home Depot. And uh, it's lasted pretty well so far, so let's take a look at it. There she is. Nice little greenhouse. Gets cooking when the sun is up. Here's Johnny. ASMR for you. And here we go. Get a wider view. All right. Have this on the wide angle on the iPhone here. So the sun's coming up. It's about 12:15. Sun is up this way and it's gonna get roasting in here uh, very quickly as soon as the sun starts hitting in here away from the clouds. This will skyrocket to 115 or 100. A little heater, this is a good heater, BioGreen. I'll stick a link to that. I have two of those. They work, they're simple, and uh, you want a simple heater on off. This has uh, temperature and different gradations. Um, you know, I would rather just turn this all the way up and use a separate thermometer. Um, but you can also have it just for fan or heat. So I just want that to be limited. Um, don't want any problems with that. So these are just some of the trees that I have they were in the garage, all of these were in the garage, and took about a quarter of the garage, two car garage, and took about a quarter of it. So the other trees are in the lean-to greenhouse, but these were starting to bud, and there's a little bit of growth there. So all on their own, they stayed dormant pretty well. I think this Bordeso Blanca Negra is the one that has uh, budded out the most so far but several others, and um, that's a nice big sip, starting to come up a little bit. These are kept pretty much in the dark, and the garage is uh, not super airtight, so these kept pretty cold for uh, keeping the outside temps. So some people have an unheated garage that's 15 degrees warmer than outside, and mine is pretty close to outside. So the temps kept low and the windows were blacked out. So March 26, I'd say these started just some budding uh, maybe a week ago. And a little tub of just a bunch of little varieties. And these are all coming back. So these dry out pretty well in the winter time. I try to remember to give them a little bit of water, but these dry out pretty fast but they're all coming back. So, as you can see. So that is my little outside greenhouse. Um, I'll try to find out before I post this video how much this costs now. Uh, real simple, you need two people put together. Uh, it's not difficult, It's uh, you just kind of fumble around quite a bit. But it has a window over there I can roll that up, get some airflow, and then this right here I will roll up as well because I can feel the temps in here already. It's probably 80 degrees. And I have a little sensor push. I need to put another battery in it that I've had out here for a couple of years. And it reaches from here to the house. That's probably 120 feet uh, or more. It'll pick up the temp inside the house and then it just sends it to my phone so I know what the temperatures are out here. Um, obviously when you know you're going to get temperatures uh, below freezing uh, you just want to double check um, make sure everything is uh, buttoned down your heaters working and you don't uh, May 26 we're going to have plenty of freezing days here in Cincinnati we're in zone 6AB so let's see, a couple things that you can do with a greenhouse like this is if you want to put some logs 
or something to weigh it down because uh, winds will really blow and pick this up. So I have logs all along here. in this greenhouse. So this is great. This will give the trees, it gets nice and warm. And uh, above 95 or upwards of 90 is not great for growing and ripening figs, but it's probably not too bad to wake these trees up. So I do need to give them a little bit of a, a spring prep. I'll do some Osmocote into the top, work it in, and uh, probably do some worm castings as well on these. And I watered them in once already, so they should be waking up pretty nicely. But this is just a Osmocote. Um, it's balanced, 14, 14, 14, and I just put a little bit in on all my plants. Do this on all my figs. It's a lazy method. So, you know, it's probably a little too much. Like that for a five gallon. You're going to work it in. Work it into the first inch or so. And then water it in really well. And that's all you have to do for a pot. It doesn't have to be complicated. Millennial Gardener has a really in-depth multi-system, multi-bucket. Um, it'll take you about two hours on a Sunday to do it. Um, I'm sure he says he can do it faster. A lot of people tried it, and I'm sure it's a good system, but doesn't beat that, in my opinion. Um, Carlos Rivera, he ha he does that. He does it spring. He does it uh, Osmoco, just like I did. He does it uh, in the middle of the summer, maybe end of June, um, and then he does it again in the fall, so uh, in uh, September. Um, middle or end of September and so here we are spring so I had done that last year and thought that I was uh, on to something uh, because the plants grew great and um, so that's what I did I did uh, Osmocote at the beginning of the spring and in the middle of summer and I think his tweak to add some at the end um, so his trees, before they go dormant, they still have uh, really green leaves. They're not all super beat up. And you look at Carlos Rivera, he's in New Jersey, and he's got as good a figs as anybody. Uh, somewhat of a head start on some of his trees. has a little bit of a greenhouse, but basically the same thing I have here. And he has fantastic trees, fruits, crazy. Now he's got a lot of very mature trees. Uh, really good shape on them. Um, hand waters all the time and he gets great sunlight. So if you're growing somewhere where there's shade and uh, shady and you get four hours of direct sunlight, you're not going to get the same results. If, uh, you know, figs needs, they're the Mediterranean and there's nothing but sun in the Mediterranean. So um, that's what they need, as much sunlight as possible. Uh, he hand waters. Um, Eric Durchi also hand waters. I set up some irrigation drip and it's tricky to get that to work just right, to get it how you want it, to get every single pot. Some pots get some, some get none. Um, some get too much for other pots to get the amount they should get. Um, so maybe that's a fail safe, but I come out and hand water all the time as well. So um, keep your life simple. You know, do what Carlos does. Um, I just added that third Osmocote in the fall, and that anything that happens over the winter time, they still gonna, they're still plants are still gonna have um, some of that nutrition there. They're not gonna be completely depleted. A lot of people don't fertilize um, 
after July. Uh, they want to slow down the growth. So uh, maybe that's for younger trees, older trees, and maybe it's not as much of an issue uh, the way Carlos does it, but just experiment and see what happens. Uh, if you're lazy like I am, do an Osmocote, uh, walking around and doing all your trees uh, three times a year. It's a time saver, it's a lifesaver. My trees are growing like gangbusters. I do other stuff like um, worm castings, I'll do uh, the beginning of the year, smaller trees, Alaska fish fertilizer, that's uh, higher in nitrogen. Uh, a lot of other things too you can do, especially at the beginning of the year, we really wanna get them a good jump start. But uh, maintaining that regimen, um, like Millennial Gardener has, it, I've heard so many people say they just can't keep it up, it's just too much work. Uh, he's, he's got different situation, he's got lots of rain, that wash out his uh, trees and uh, pull out all the nutrients and so on. So maybe, um, you know, that's what he does to get better results for himself there. So you gotta adjust everything. So start somewhere and uh, these Osmocotes time release and it depends a little bit on how much you water as well. But, you know, time release, um, you can do whatever you wanna do in terms of adding some more organics to it. Uh, you don't want to go crazy and keep adding synthetics when you're ramping up your synthetics you can burn a plant um, you can give it too much uh, with organics you basically can't over fertilize with organics um, so unless you're doing something pretty crazy you can add other good organics um, but anyway keep it simple keep your life simple and this fertilizing regimen is great. Just Osmocote right on the top. And it has a little scooper, you can look at that. You don't have to get too crazy with exactly how much you're doing every time. Um, you can watch Carlos's video. Um, and uh, I'll try to put a link in here. It's all it is, it's three times a year. That's it, and he hand waters, he has lots of sun. And that's it. Keep it simple. See you later, folks. Subscribe so I can keep putting out more videos for you guys. Thanks.